Across the Flatirons, the Lower Range, and into the Colorado Rockies, the white wrap of winter. And tis the season on the year's biggest shopping day. Coach Tom Osborne and his Nebraska Cornhuskers have found one miracle already in Columbia. Colorado coach Rick Neuheisel wouldn't mind finding one of those today for his Buffaloes. This is the rest of our season, and it's important that we go out and fight and scratch and claw and see if we can't get a ball to bounce our way and uh, hopefully get our crowd into it. And uh, if we can accomplish all that, it could be a magical Friday. And today in Boulder, Colorado, it's the number two ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers and the frustrated Colorado Buffaloes. And this is a familiar kind of scenario you often find at the end of a season. One team with big ideas trying to protect their posture, another team that wants to mess it up completely and make their season. And to that point, let's turn now to Bob Greasy and talk about this. Very good point, Keith. The motivation for Nebraska, of course, is to keep on trucking. They want to keep winning and so they can get to the, the uh, ball game and have a chance to overtake Michigan. The thing that they can do here today is impress some voters in the uh, both polls, and that is they've got Colorado. Colorado was beaten by Michigan early in the season. If they can beat Colorado a lot worse than Michigan did, it may prove uh, valuable in getting some points for them in the polls. Uh, Colorado, on the other hand, they're playing for a, a winning record, they're playing for a possible bowl game, and they're playing their arch rival. That's their incentive here today, but they're going to play much better than they've played all year to win. Now let's spend a moment with Lynn Swan on the field. Well, Keith, thank you very much. The challenge is squarely on the shoulders for the Colorado Buffalo. But, of course, what they've had to do is really pay attention to the film against Nebraska and Central Florida, Nebraska and Missouri. What do Missouri and Central Florida have in common? An ability to throw the football, to be mobile in the backfield, and to make the teams respect the run. Now, when I say respect the run, I don't mean that they have to gain 100 yards or 200 yards but make the Nebraska defense respectable enough where they can't pin their ears back and just have an all-out rush on the quarterback. This is a big day at Folsom Field here in Boulder, Colorado. It is senior day. It is the last opportunity for these young men to come out for the family, friends, and their peers and show their talent one more time. Yes, there is something wrong with that picture. It's a bright, warm sun reflecting across Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado on November 28th. It is absolutely balmy, and nobody is happier than this man, Tom Osborne, who has come down from Lincoln where it's much colder. Tom's record over his 25 years, 252 wins, and no other coach has ever won that many that quickly. The head man of the Colorado Buffaloes in his middle 30s now. He's been seasoned some this year. The record is 5-5 five and five this season, coming off two previous seasons of 10 wins and only two losses in those. So his Rex total record is 25-9. and nine. So it's an absolutely glorious day in Boulder as we get ready to play a football game between the Buffaloes and the Cornhuskers. Colorado won the toss. They elected to take the football. They want the first offensive series, and under the circumstances, it's probably a pretty good idea. It also means that this guy right here, number 98, Grant Wistrom, and his team of destroyers will be full bore from the very outset because this defensive front four for Nebraska is pretty good. Keith, for those who have followed uh, this series in the last couple of years, especially at Folsom Field here in Colorado, this uh, weather is just magnificent. It was, it has been cold and rainy and icy here the last two times these two teams played here at Colorado. They play on the carpet. Chris Brown will kick it off for Nebraska, a Texan who has knocked 36 of his 72 kickoffs into the end zone and they have not been returned. Ben Kelly, number one, you saw him along with number two, Damon Wheeler. They are waiting to receive it. Kelly is a freshman, Wheeler is a sophomore, and they can run. Brown's kick. It's good. <laughs> Right through the uprights. Here's uh, the chili starting. There are going to be up. problems today, I can tell. <laughs> For the Colorado offense. 
Along the front, this is the group that probably will determine how this day will go for the Buffaloes. They must protect the quarterback. they got to block the run. Receivers, this unit won't have much to do if the line can't protect the quarterback and give him time. And in the backfield, the biggest and the fastest running back, Marlon Barnes, has knee surgery. He's gone. But again, go back to the old theme, quarterback John Hessler needs time. Here's your first snap. And the pass is away, and it's completed. And that's a good omen to Chris Anderson, the bigger of the wide receivers. The Nebraska defense along the front, this portion is lethal, and they usually give quarterbacks very little time for anything except to run for their lives. In the linebacking core, the man in the middle, Jay Foreman, 235 pounds. He's flanked by light and fast Ortiz and McFarland. In the defensive secondary, there's some holes here. But the key here is the front four helps them a lot by just not giving the people much time. This carry will get it up near the 39-yard line with Herschel Trutman getting good blocking on the right side of the line with uh, Eric Warfield coming over to make the tackle for Nebraska. So look at Colorado in the Big 12, Keith. They get it done through the air. Averaging second in the conference, passing 10th out of 12 teams rushing the football. Here's, however, a place where Colorado suffers some. They don't have the big, big, tough back that can go in there and hammer away for you and get the short yardages. It is second down and a long two now. They threw it for a first down. Now they've run it for about seven and a half yards. They will at times today as we get some movement along the line and the flags drop, and I think that'll be five against the Buffaloes. And this is the kind of a thing that's been haunting them all season long. Little, little tiny mistakes, but just enough to get them that five-yarder when it hurts the most. Dead ball, false start in the offense. Five-yard penalty in the veins, second down. Randy Crystal, as you see, is the referee. The umpire is Joe Darden, linesman Carl Johnson, Gary Brown, the long ju uh, line judge. Um, the back judge is Ron Murphy, Scott Cook is the field judge, and Dwayne Osborne is your side judge. Keith, that turns a second and two into a second and seven. seven now yep. you come in question whether you're not going to make a first down before you knew you were going to keep the ball make a first down. Well, they go to a single back. Hessler back to throw it, gets it off to the sidelines, and the catch is made. The catch is made by Phil Savoy, who's been playing dinged up. He's had a turf toe, he's had a sore shoulder. But if Colorado is going to have a chance today, Phil Savoy's got to make some plays for him. Well, that's true, Keith. And if there, the one edge that this Colorado offense does have is their receivers are experienced and has an edge on the young defensive secondary for Nebraska. Here's a look at John Hessler, the first five games, 50% not very good. The last five games, he has really come on. McFarland has come off the field for Nebraska, and uh, Eric Johnson has replaced him. Buffaloes run it over the left side, and there's a yard there, and that'll take care of it. Jason Wiltz and Jason Peter occupy the interior positions along that defensive front four. And Jason Peter is considered by many to be one of the toughest interior defensive linemen in the country. He's got my vote. He's got two of the best defensive linemen in the country, Keith and Westrum and Peter. To look at Nebraska defensively. First in the Big Ten in total defense and rushing defense. They don't, they don't give up many yards on the ground. Sherrington's in the backfield now for the Buffaloes. He's quick, got some power, got some power. But number one, Eric Johnson, who has just come in there at a linebacker position, comes over and takes him out of there. He's out of Phoenix, a junior, Eric is. And so now the Buffaloes are looking at third and long. Steve Warren comes in for Colorado, I mean for Nebraska, which gives the Huskers something of a goal line look on third down and long. Chiverini got three wideouts to the bottom of your picture there and one at the top. So there are four wideouts on the field as Hessler drops. Better hurry. Takes off. Can't do it. So there's the pressure we were telling you that comes from that front four. Grant Wistrom was the man who made the tackle and they will punt. Well, the 
pass protection is going to be so important. Wistrom on the outside just gets the penetration and then gets the sack. There was a man open downfield. If he would have had a little bit more time, he just runs over the left tackle, Shane Cook. Nick Peach is in the punt. Lance Brown waiting for it for the Cornhuskers, and uh, Nebraska has called for a timeout here. So they're going to rotate some people, and they didn't have the right people on the field, apparently, at least the ones they wanted for this possible return. Oh, you got a timeout. All right, we're back in sunny and warm Boulder, Colorado on this <laughs> day after Thanksgiving. And here's Nick Peach for his first punt of the day. He's a sophomore out of Seattle, Washington. Averaging uh, just under 39 yards per punt. Waiting for it is Lance Brown. And Lance is going to have to look up into a brilliant spotlight like sun. And he won't have a chance to get to this because the pressure came right up the middle. Jay Foreman, number 44, middle linebacker, was right in his face. And Peach shanked it out of bounds. So the Chili starting lineup for the Nebraska offense along the front, perhaps not the strongest the Huskers have had, but they're good athletes and they function very well as a unit. The receivers, these wide receivers block in 10 games. They've caught just 80 passes. They block. And uh, the backs, well, they've all had a big season back there. Scott Frost could reach 1,000 yards today in both rushing and in passing. And not very many folks have been. What did you say? Ten people have done that? Yes. He will be the tenth. He'll be the tenth. Be the tenth. That was a 17-yard punt for Colorado. So, once again, here's Nebraska with that pressure, getting good field position. But along the left side of the line, the Huskers stood up. And uh, Fred Pollock's going to cost him five. So Scott Frost wanted to go on a quick count, Keith, and I don't think that's smart in Good a. Ball. a ball start on the yeah, on the road in a, a hospital in a loud, loud situation like this is. You don't want to go on quick counts because the linemen can't hear you. They they don't know when to go. So arithmetic is better. What's better? Rhythmatic, rhythmatic count. Oh, okay. Hut one, hut two, hut All right. Three. All right. Everybody dance. A one and a two. <laughs> First down and 15. It's the quarterback cross keeping it. He bellied to the fullback, Michael Becker. He pulled it down and he traveled on up the field and he picked up almost 10 yards behind the blocking of guess who? The tailback, Amon Green. The Colorado defense along the front, this group has lacked fire at times this season and there have been a lot of big plays made against them. In the linebacking core, you've got a true freshman, Ty Gregorak, in the middle. He and Ron Murkison need a big day today. And the defensive backs, the safeties, will work a double shift against to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Here's the pitch outside the green. He's got the first down. Again, blocking is just awesome. Washington coming over to make the tackle. That was a slow developing play because uh, Colorado is so conscious of McAvick of the fullback. And you have to be. Well, it, you know, it's the option, and that's what the Nebraska is known for. Nebraska offense, look at what they've done in the nation. Their first overall, first in a lot of categories, 106th passing the football. They don't care where they are passing. They're going to run the football at you all day long. They got their power set. That means they've got two blockers going that way, but there's a heck of a play defensively for Colorado. They just ran right through the Nebraska blocking, and there's going to be a loss on the play. Markerson was one of those going through to make a play along with Hannibal Navy. This had to be a busted play, Keith. There's three guys in the backfield, and uh, they're just too many guys to get out of the way. The problem with that play is you had too many fullbacks. Yeah, I think somebody and didn't shift. Yeah, they needed to shift <laughs> out or fake up the middle. It just, uh, they need, Green was saying, get out of my way. It's second down and 17 now as Frost puts it in the air and it is blocked by Lance Brown. Brown had the ball right in front of him, Damon Wheeler. He had Wheeler shielded off by his body and he just dropped it. Well, from behind the defense, Scott was looking to our right side. He wanted to throw to the tight end. Nebraska and their quarterbacks always get a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. Wheeler just knocks that ball Yeah, he loose. got a piece, didn't he? 
They always get one-on-one -on -one situations because everybody that plays Nebraska wants to stop the run with seven or eight guys up in the box. That leaves a lot of single coverage on the wide receivers. Oh, give Wheeler more credit on that. He did get yeah, a piece of it. Yeah, just got a piece of it. Third down and 17. There's your belly to the fullback. The keeper by Frost breaks that tackle at the line of scrimmage. Breaks another one and pounds on down the field for a first down. Did you say third and 17? Yep. And they run the option. The quarterback keeps it. I mean, this is a play that right Nebraska there. feels like, hey, we can pick this up. Third and 17 is like throwing the ball. They have confidence in these option plays. And Scott Frost has just had an outstanding season. Ryan Black was the man who had his hands on his feet and good wrapping. You have to wrap Nebraska runners. Get your arms around him. Yeah. If you've got a rope, and, use it too. And the quarterback is a run in, a runner. No question about that. Here's Makovica pounding up the middle and gets about five yards on the carry. And he's brought down by Viliami Maumau. Scott Frost came into this game 940 yards, 16 touchdowns. Mon Green is uh, almost 1,500 yards. Makovica, the fullback, look at their average per carry, all of them over six yards. Scott Frost, Keith, is uh, fifth in the in the conference in rushing. Now, he's a quarterback, but he's fifth in the running department. Second down and five, they go to Green, and they stop him after a yard. Mau Mau again leading the tacklers along with Olsen. Mau Mau 77, and he's a chunk. He's a chunk is right, 310 pounds. His name in... Uh, He's Tongan. He's a native Tongan. His name in native means uh, destroy. A.J. Kristoff is the defensive coordinator for Colorado. And he's got all kinds of hopes and plans for this. But the best part about this game was he had two weeks to prepare for this yep. option. Yep. Here it comes. Cross. They stuck him short of the line of scrimmage. I mean, short of the first down. He got across the line of scrimmage for about a yard and a half. And on third down, it's Marcus Washington getting his third tackle of the ball game. Well, the corners, Washington is a corner, are going to have to be very active and come up and make tackles. You mentioned earlier that these wide receivers, Keith, are blockers. Well, today the corners for uh, Colorado are going to have to be tacklers to, to counteract that uh, blocking from the wide receivers. It is fourth down and two, and Nebraska will go. Brown's got a leg long enough from here, but they're going to go for it on fourth down and two. Give it to the fullback, McAvicka. And he's got his first down at the Colorado 26-yard line, and they just simply overpowered Colorado right up the middle. Well, the right side of the offensive line, uh, Eric Anderson and Zadiska, and the tight end just made a huge hole. So look at Eric Anderson, that entire offensive line, Keith. I, every time we do a Nebraska game, I, I enjoy watching this all. It's very athletic. They're not big. I mean, they're not tall. They all have good feet, very athletic. Green bounces through the hole. And he is down to the 15-yard line. Ryan Sutter brings him down. Well, Keith and Bob, I think Nebraska is trying to send an early message to Colorado that they're going to take this football and just drive it down the middle of the field and do the things they have to do. They don't want to give up possession of the football on fourth down. They're just going to take it to them. And if they're successful, it's going to be an extremely long day for the Buffaloes, Keith. Well, I think the Buffaloes expect a long day, but all they hope to do is keep it close and somewhere along the way get a big play. Here's Green turning it on first down. And we'll take down after a couple of yards on the carry. ABC's Monday Night Football this week. We'll go to the NFC Central. Defending champion Green Bay Packers going to Minnesota to play the Vikings. This is a big ball game in the whole sum of the season for both these teams. That'll be at 9 Eastern time here on ABC Monday Night. Packers and the Vikings. This is Makovica, the fullback. He's down across the 10 and rolls to the 9 or the 8, maybe. 
the first possession for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They're gobbling up most of the time in the first quarter, marching it down the field. They've overcome two penalties already. On the ISO play, you guys got out of beatdown. Rick Neuheisel Keith told us yesterday that he wanted to shorten the game. He didn't want to. He, did, he wanted to keep possession of the football. He wanted to take time off the clock. Well, time's coming off the clock, but it's with Nebraska on the field. Checks off. Frost has still got it. See, he's a big, strong athlete. They hit him right at the line of scrimmage, but he turns his body and gets two more. And he had two men holding on to him. One of them is Hannibal Davies, the linebacker, and the other safety, Ryan Black. So now the Cornhuskers will go into field goal posture with Chris Brown coming on as Colorado's defense gets tougher down inside the 20-yard line. This will be a 25-yard try. And this is a very, very good field goal kicker. It's good. And Nebraska uses most of the time in the first quarter, but to Colorado's credit, they make them settle for a field goal. presentation of college football brought to you by the all-new white track Grand Prix by Pontiac wider is better by Nike who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth by Miller Lite now official beer sponsor of the NFL and Valvoline the number one choice of America's top mechanics people who know use Valvoline A mostly full Folsom Field. Watching Nebraska take a 3-0 lead. We'll kick it now to the Buffaloes. They've got Kelly. And uh, Wheeler back there. And Brown denies them the opportunity to return it again. So they'll come out to the 20-yard line where it'll be first down. John Hessler, the last time we saw him was at Michigan. At least the last time uh, this crew saw him. It was a tough day against the Wolverines. But there are two or three factors that come into play here, and, and they haven't, I don't think, enough been made of it. When John Hessler had that big sophomore season, backing up Coy Detmer, he had different people catching the ball. A couple of years ago, yeah, and he came in in a relief row, Keith. You're right. Good lineman, better lineman than they have now, and better receivers than they have now. So they come out and set up in the eye. They'd love to run the ball right at Nebraska some. Let's see if they try it. Yes, they do. But I don't think you're going to make a living running against the Nebraska defense. Well, Rick That's told us, carry. Yeah, Rick told us yesterday, we're, we want to take time off the clock. We want to control the ball. We're going to run right at them. Their speed, left to right, is too much. We're going to run right at them, quick passing, and then we're going to take our shots downfield. Maybe when we get around midfield, we're going to throw the ball deep downfield and take our shots one-on-one -on, -one on their young defensive backs. Second down and six. Hester pulls it down, sets up, and throws deep. He got his man, Tennyson McCarty. Tennyson McCarty, the tight end, down the middle of the field with a big play at the 30-yard line. This is a kid who's, who has such arthritis at his feet that it's amazing he can walk well, much less play football. Well, he's a fifth-year senior playing his last game, and I think what you're going to see is a little push-off at the right time by the fifth-year senior. McCarty's going to just shove him just a little bit. Not from this angle, you won't see it, but it's a big play. I think the push-off happened just before that, but when I was watching it live, he pushed off, and Brown actually pointed at him and said, hey, he pushed off on me. You've got a penalty flag thrown by the linesman across the way on that play to the right side. That was a 45-yard pass play to McCarthy. The ball is at the 30-yard line, and you've got a penalty coming up, I think, against Colorado. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty and remains first down. Again, the little 
ticky-tack mistakes. Bottom of the screen, Keith. Right there, the little push-off. Brown had pretty good coverage. You see him pointing with his left hand. He didn't make the tackle. He was pointing. He said, hey, he pushed off on me. Well, the back judge didn't see it. It's a game of the court and the uncourt left. <laughs> well, Rick said he was wanted to get some big plays. That was one of them. That's the longest reception of McCarty's career, too. Previous was 15 yards, at least this season. On first down and 15, Hessler's pass to the sidelines is incomplete. Thrown very hard. He had to kind of touch that ball in between defenders. And uh, Savoy really had no chance to get Well, and he, you know, they, he didn't want to take a sack. It was a five-step drop. Take five steps and throw it. If he's not open, just throw it over. He gave him a chance to catch it, but he did the right thing. Get rid of it. Don't take a sack. That sun's tough, isn't it? They're looking right back into it going that way. It's tough for the receivers yeah. now looking back. Yes. Sherrington is the deep man in the backfield. Wayne Sherrington. Santa Ana, California with the ball. Didn't get a real clean start. Stumbled a bit. Jason Peter takes that big old arm and knocks his feet from under him. So the ball will be put down right about the 33-yard line. Jason Peter, number 55, Keith, uh, right here watches. He's going to get in. Going to fight the battle in the defensive line first. Fights off the block of the guard, keeps his feet. He gets in there and makes the play. If he hadn't have been there, there was a nice little hole on the left side. Third down and 13 now for Colorado. Five-yard penalty hurt him. Double wide, top of the picture. Goes this way, and it's no good. Intended for Marcus Stiggers. Stiggers is only 5'7", 175-pound sophomore out of Dallas, and he could not stretch for it. You know that uh, on Colorado's opening drive, the number four, Octavius McFarland, left the playing field. He sustained a hip pointer, and he came to the sideline. The trainers put a pad on that hip and said he is questionable. He is not, at this moment, returned into the ballgame, Keith. All right, 20, Eric Johnson playing in place of him. Jason Leslie is in to punt. Oh, I'm sorry, punt. It's a field goal try of 50 yards. Jason Leslie is the young man that came over here from UCLA and uh, he swings his leg had plenty of leg on the 50 yard try but it pulled just to the left and misses after the missed field goal try by Leslie from 50 Nebraska gets the ball back at their own 33 they lead three to nothing and you've got a minute and 42 seconds to play in the first quarter. A.J. Kristoff, the coordinator for the Buffs defensively said, we just want to, we don't want anything bad to happen to us early. We want to stay in the ball game and not get down. Well, they're, they're in the ball game almost the first quarter. They've only given up three points. One of the interesting uh, substitutions as that play picks up a couple of yards is Ben Kelly. The freshman, he's in there at uh, 5'10", 175 pounds. So, uh, you know, with Sheldon Jackson, for example, Nebraska could get a huge size advantage yes. over Kelly on that intermediate pass route. But Kelly is in there at corner, uh, replacing Davis. He and Washington with the corners right now. Anybody in there on that Buffalo defense better be good tacklers, Steve. Right. For, first and foremost. Second down and eight from the 35. Cross. Gets his pass away. They've got the screen set up over here, and it didn't work very well. It took a long time to get it unwound, and finally Kelly was able to get to the ankles of Amon Green. Gregor Act, number 35, the middle linebacker, is starting his second game. He's a true freshman. It's out there and is blocked by 59 Heskew. But the Kelly, Keith, the guy you were talking about, the true freshman, made a big play. Redshirt freshman, excuse me. Wheeler is off the field now at a corner for uh, Colorado with Barnes coming in. Boss rolls it out to throw it. And his man is wide open. Kenny Cheatham. Ran a curl, 
went just past the uh, marker, turned inside, and three yards to the good, made the catch for a first down. This is Nebraska passing, uh, Keith. They don't do a whole lot. This man here is going to come in motion and then go out here. Here's the man they're trying to get the ball to, just going to run a little curl. Go in motion, two-man route to the top of the screen, roll the quarterback a little Wide bit. Open. Look at that. Just something simple. Mm. Run it with Green. And Amon Green will go from the 46 out to midfield. That's a four-yard pickup. The first quarter is history. And our score after one, Nebraska three, Colorado nothing. To the second quarter of play, and I would imagine the temperature now is beyond 50 degrees here in Boulder, Colorado. I know it's that warm on the field. Reflection off the rug. It's Nebraska's football, second down and six. And they'll run it up the middle with Makovica carrying. And he'll pick up about four. If you look at the numbers of the first quarter. Nebraska just, Colorado's had the ball two times, and Nebraska just once, and Nebraska running the ball 66 yards, passing for only 11. At 83 yards for total offense, total yards for Colorado, 45 yards of that came on that one pass play. Right now, the Buffaloes have to fend off the insistent Cornhuskers as they're looking at third down and two. And there's penalty flag. I think that's against... Nebraska. Dead ball. Ball scored on the offense. Five yard penalty and the Lions third down. Well, so far, A.J. Kristoff has been able to do much of what he wanted to do, and that is simply keep Nebraska from getting into the roll, getting the rhythm, getting the the whole thing started. Once they get momentum, so far the Buffaloes have kept them away from it. Cross, options down, pitches back to Green. Green, but he's dropped his shoulder, and boy, he hammered Marshall Marcus Washington. But uh, Marcus stopped him short of the first down when it looked like he was might break it big. Green. He got a heck of a spot, I'll tell you that. Uh, the fullback in this option, Keith, is, is, is very important. Watch Makovic, a number 45, gets the block on the middle linebacker, Gregorak. And it's going to be uh, close to the first down. I was wondering if his uncle was the man that spotted it. <laughs> Oh, think, that's a very generous spot. You think he got a, a good spot, huh, Lance? Yes, I do. Yeah, I think uh, I think Rick does too. <laughs> but Green is a tough guy. He's strong and he's bigger than you think. He's well over 200 pounds. He's run coming into this game 1,532 yards this season, and uh, right at 3,500 for his career so far. And here he goes again, and down to about the 35-yard line for nine yards. Twenty. Well, Keith, you were talking about the weather and the temperature. I've got my little thermometer down here, and as you can see, uh, it's a very nice uh, 56, 57 degrees. You know, almost good enough from my standpoint to uh, take my hat off and maybe get some little suntan oil and yeah. chill out for the afternoon. Don't get carried away because <laughs> we're trying to get that cold out of you. Uh, well, this is a birth, the best weather for me, that's for sure. <laughs> Going to America's Garden Spots this winter. <laughs> Second down and one. It is to Makovica, the fullback, and it's good for a big play to the 14-yard line. And he got the mismatch. He got him down there against Kelly, the freshman. Makovica coming in has only caught two passes on the year. Usually he comes in there and he's blocking on the linebacker or the defensive back. It's a nice catch for a guy that, that doesn't catch many balls, Keith. He's 235 pounds, less than six feet tall. He is an outstanding player and a valuable asset to this offense. Dr. Tom's going to spoil it, letting him catch a pass. I mean, save that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it 
This is Frost handing off inside. When he's hot, give it to him, but this time the Buffs are looking for him and they stack him up. Nick Ziegler, who is a bit undersized at that uh, defensive end position, but he got that tackle. You can win tickets to this season's Rose Bowl. Yep. Get online with ABC Sports College Football and solve the word puzzles to enter. All on America Online, keyword ABC Sports. This is Eric Brown, or Green rather, and Amon Green uh, as the penalty flag goes down. Over the right side. It is on that right side where you find Zadiska and Anderson. Ball start on the offense. And Five that's where the movement occurred, which triggered the penalty, it appeared. In recent games between these two teams, they've been, they've traded a lot of paint down in the trenches, and they're getting back to it again today. Bobby Newcomb is on the field for Nebraska. But this is Scott Ross running it into the end zone for a touchdown. He looks like an old-fashioned tailback. He is. I mean, it's exactly what he is. He's just... He'd have been, he'd be an All-American in a single wing That's with a, General Nealon, though. I guarantee you. you got that right. <laughs> I mean, he's where he should be. I mean, he's back in Nebraska running the option, running the ball, and throwing it some. This is an ideal type quarterback for Tom Osborne. Chris Brown for the try. Pops it up, good. So the Cornhuskers remain insistent, and it's Scott Frost runs it in for the touch. Frost from 19 yards. He now totals 992 yards rushing for the season. He's picked up 32 yards on three out of four passing so far in the game. Uh, he looks like he's going to reach his 1,000 yards, both rushing and passing. That's his 17th touchdown. That ties Amon Green for the lead. Line drive is caught at the one-yard line by Ben Kelly. He's one of the best in the country if you give him a little daylight. And he's out across the 30-yard line. Keith, let's go back and take a look. Watch as the offensive line going to block down this way. All three of these guys are going to come in. The back two guys, what first guy is going to kick out. The other tackle is going to lead up, the, up in the hole. So this is a quarterback draw trap. Stop it right here. Look at the look at the seam right here, the lineman blocking right there, and you got a lineman in the hole. He didn't have anybody to block. That's Anderson. He's looking for somebody to block. Scott should have given him the ball, let him score. We've got a timeout. There's an injured uh, Cornhusker down on the field. The score's 10 0 Nebraska. And whoever it was, Mike Brown, pops up. We've got one, two Browns in the defensive secondary. Got a brown and a green. We've got a green on the offensive <laughs> side of the ball. We've got a north and a south and an east and a west uh -huh. coming next year. Clint uh -huh. Finley, number 20, will replace uh, Mike Brown. And it's from the 31-yard line, a first down for the Colorado Buffalo. Hessler hands it off up the middle. And it's Rochelle Shell Trotman for about four yards, and we go to John Saunders. It's time for the... San Antonio, where you can walk for the river and feast upon the fair that makes you ample. Well, that's the game that uh, Texas upset uh, Nebraska last year. Championship game. Kessler with his lineman stepped on him, but John delivered the pitch anyway, and they were trying to sweep it. I don't know how he got it out. I don't either. But I don't know how he got that ball out. I get keep from breaking a foot with a big old lineman standing on it. This happens a lot. A lineman will step back, pull back, and step on his foot right there. Now he said, how do I get this ball back there to him? That's just great improvis improvising by the quarterback. <laughs> McFarlane is back on the field now. Octavius uh, made that tackle. So he's got the uh, hip pointer wrapped up. 
padded sufficiently to go back and play. Third down and eight now for Colorado. They need uh, something good to happen before the hole gets too deep. Hester takes off. And John dives for his first down. And if they give him a decent mark, he's going to have it. Grant Wistrom came up, though, to lay it on him and uh, try to keep him from getting there. I don't think they gave it to him. He ran right out of his shoe. You don't want to be in too many third and long situations against Nebraska. Wister put pressure on him in the backfield, and then when he started scrambling, got upfield and made the hit. I think he'll go for it if he doesn't get it. They're going to measure him. Uh, it's a good measurement because it gives Colorado and Rick Neuheisel some time to think about what he might want to do. Joe Rick turns. I got one coming, guys. Oh, he's got it. That wasn't even close. Not even close. <laughs> Rick, as you see, both both head coaches are calling the plays, and and uh, Rick singles them in. Whereas on the other side of the field, Tom Osborne sends them in with uh, different players. Both of them, ex-quarterbacks, UCLA for uh, New Heisel and Hastings College in Nebraska for Osborne. First down at the 41-yard line for the Buffs. Hessler's pass looped. He's got air under it for Savoy. He caught it. Well, he's going to call him out of bounds. Yep. Oh, my goodness. They need something good to happen. And they're not getting it yet. Savoy was defended by Sweeney, the freshman. They had the matchup they wanted. And he didn't get the foot down. I don't know. It looked like he had, did he juggle the ball? Well, when he came down, I think it's a his good call. left foot was out of bounds. I think it's a good call. Yeah, I do too. I've been picking on him. I'll praise him. Yeah, I think it's a good call. It's a tough call for one official to make, though. That is, how do you look and see if he's holding on to the ball and Very see if hard. his foot is in bounds at the same time? Absolutely. You need help. Second down and ten. Good play by Colorado, though. Very good pass and catch, just six inches the difference. That's Shiverini, who is their possession receiver, and Darren will pick up almost nine yards on that reception. You got that right. Good throw by Hessler. Hessler Johns throwing the ball well today, Keith. The one yep. that we just saw down the field was right there. Could have been caught, and uh, Nebraska just needs to stop him, and Hessler's just converting third downs into first downs. Third down, and... Long one. And they go inside to Cherrington, and again, it depends on the mark. It's that close. Those <laughs> lights, that's a... They've had a bunch of tough uh, calls yes, already. they have. <laughs> He's got his first down. That time, uh, they got a good spot. Mike Brown. He's back in the ball game. Mike, remember, was shaken up on the kickoff. He's back at that safety spot. Forty-nine yard line of Nebraska. First down, Buffaloes. Ten nothing. Cornhuskers lead. Hester's pass down the middle. Penalty flag. Thrown right where the quarterback was standing. So let's see what we've got. Holding Colorado. Thought that might be the case. So it uh, bangs 10 yards against the Buffaloes from the spot of the foul. And the spot of the foul is back on the Colorado 46 yard line. So they're going to walk off 10 from there. On the offense. It'll be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, and it remains Watch first right down. here, number 78, Melvin Thomas, against Jason Peter. Peter tries to get around him, and Thomas has got him wrapped up pretty good and just kind of throws him to the ground. The umpire standing right behind the defensive lineman. We'll so see, it turns into, a, yeah. turns into a 16-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. That's a killer. Yeah. 
Four wideouts on the field, and it's first down and 26. Hessler steps up, gets it away. He's throwing for Stickers. It is intercepted by Nebraska's Eric Warfield. There were four Huskers back there, and it was McFarlane bearing down, coming right down the barrel at Hessler, and John had to unload it. We'll give Jason Peter a credit on that because that last holding penalty that backed him up to long yardage forced him to throw the ball downfield. Rick wanted him to look him off a little bit. The conflict between those two, not nearly what it might appear to be at the eye blink. Ten to nothing, Cornhuskers lead the Buffaloes. Hessler having been intercepted, Nebraska goes to work at the 32-yard line. And there's a pickup of a couple of yards on the play inside with Green. Here's Swanning. Well, Keith, as a receiver, when you're running down the field, you see one of those high passes coming at you. It's almost like announcing to the flies, there's honey on the ground, come get it. When the ball hangs up, the secondary has a lot of chance to wreck. Look at them, just gathering themselves. And they're, they're looking at the ball, coming back, and they're in a better position than the receiver who's got to look back at the ball. The secondary can come forward and attack that pass. So it's always tough for the wide receiver to make that play, Keith. Stickers made a try to knock it loose, but he was outsized on the play. Here's your option. And it's first down Nebraska at the 49-yard line with Ryan Sutter knocking him out of bounds. And you got a Cornhusker hurt. Hurt a lot, apparently. Number 59, that's John Heskew, the center, and he's holding on to his ankle. Can you take a look at the top? Uh, Warfield, right up here. Now watch as the quarterback's going to go back. He's going to look this way, and that's going to pull the free safety that way. That's what Neuheisel was talking to him about. He wanted him to look off. He looks to the right the whole time, and the Warfield... The guy that's going to intercept this ball is going to go that way from the get-go. That's what Rick was talking to him about on the sideline. So we've got a timeout for the center, John Heskew. <laughs> Matt Hoskinson is in at center, replacing Heskew, all 280 pounds of him. He'll play guard, too, if you want him. He can do a lot of things. And Nebraska's play selection clearly reflecting that everything is normal. Normal. Exactly. And, and passes four, and they've completed three of the four. First down and ten. Option Tortoise. Pitch back to Green. Good time. That is a very good play by Ben Kelly. Look uh, from behind the offense, a fake to the fullback. Now he go gets his block. This is just good defense here. Well, Keith Heskew has a sprained left ankle. They cut the tape off. They're going to further uh, examine it, but uh, right now it's a sprained ankle, and we'll have to wait to see if he gets back in. Thank you. They Fit. go to the shotgun here now as uh, the old quarterback draw with uh, Scott Cross, the tailback, and he goes to the 45-yard line of Colorado. Frost had carried the ball 147 times. That's almost an average of 15 per game coming into today's game. Here's a look at Tom Osborne on the sideline calling the plays. He's this his 25th year as head coach in Nebraska, Keith, and one of the things he's been using this offense time after time. Scott Frost now has his 1,000 yards rushing for the season. He's got it. He's going to go down. He turns again, though, and gets almost two yards on the turn, but Olsen and Phillips are able to turn him back inside. Who does Frost look like from your memories of watching folks who played single-wing football? He sort of reminds me of Camp Wilson, who played for the Tulsa back in their golden days. you got to be kidding. How do you think I'm going to remember <laughs> Camp Wilson? <laughs> Maybe it's Frankie Sinkwich. How's that? I don't remember Frank either. <laughs> 
Herschel Troutman is deep now for Colorado to receive the punt as Frost Watch. was uh, two and a half Watch yards short. That's a fake here. Fourth down, long two. Oh, well, they're snapping to it. And uh, the left footer knocks it down there. Troutman calls for a fair catch, and Colorado's down in eight yard line where they've got it first down. That was a 36 yard punt for Jesse Cook. America's biggest road show, Saturday 1 Eastern Regional Action, Penn State, Michigan State, Georgia, Georgia Check. Check your local listings for those games in your area. And after college football at 4.30 Eastern, the Skins game. Tiger Woods, Tom Lehman, Mark O'Mara, and David Duvall, who has replaced Fred Couples, ready withdrawing because of the illness of his dad. So they've given him to the nine-yard line on your mark, where it's first down and 10 for the Buffaloes. This the fullback, Troutman the deep back, Troutman gets the ball, gets across the 10 to the 11, two yards. This game is going pretty much the way Neuheisel wanted it, Keith. He wants to take time off the clock and uh, keep the points to a, to a minimum, but uh, the possessions, this is the fourth possession for Colorado. They haven't done much with it. That missed field goal was a long field goal over 50 yards. That pass play to Savoy was another one of those plays that could have, could have, could have, but it didn't. Sherrington is the running back. He's got it. He shook one tackle and keeps on pounding. So Dwayne Sherrington, the sophomore from Santa Ana, picks up the first down from Colorado at the 22-yard line, and it's Aaron Wade that helped him along the way. One of the big uglies up front. Well, you got the two linemen from the backside, Keith. Watch as two guys are going to come and block. He almost gets there too late. The time he almost gets caught from the backside right there. And Warfield, number three, who made the interception, come in and need a little help from his friends to get him down. Charrington again. He's a tough guy. That's another first down for Colorado with Darren Fisk to fullback. That helped him along that time. So that's the idea that uh, Colorado had run right at him. They feel they can do that better. It's Wistrom on the other side, number 98. That guy's motor is always running. Yeah, he would have beat up three guys that time. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Peter, I tell you, he, his motor's running all the time, too. 350 to play in the first half as they come to the ball. Up the middle. Carrington. So he's come in and uh, turned in some impressive work. Put that ball at the 40-yard line, Colorado side of the field. Marlon Barnes, who was their biggest and fastest running back, out with knee surgery. Just had that surgery this week, and uh, he'll be back next year, as will Charrington. Second down and three. Oh, Hessler almost dropped it. Pitches it back to Charrington, and he will lose on the play. And the first man that got there was Mike Rucker, number 84. And by almost not uh, getting that ball, the timing of the play was all fouled up. So they lose a little bit on it and bring it back to third down and five. The key to, to playing against an aggressive defense like Nebraska is third and short, second and short. They've had a couple of second and shorts and they've messed them up on penalties or, or, uh, or missed uh, snaps and, and now they go backwards on second down. It's even third and longer than it was. Charrington had to leave because he was shaken up. Yeah, he yeah. helped off. That's not a big five yards either. That's more like four and a half. So you got trips, three wide outs at the bottom of the picture, one at the top. Hessler takes off up the middle and wanted to. Now he's still alive. Now throws. And it is caught by Anderson. Now you got 
got a penalty flag. They may wave that one off. I don't know what to do. Wistrom was the man that Wistrom. came in and spoiled the play. Yep. Penalties against Colorado. Whatever. Hessler. Hessler did a nice job yes, of avoiding Wistrom and getting keeping it alive. They're calling ineligible receiver downfield on the scramble. The lineman went on down there. The man who caught the ball certainly legal. Chris Anderson, a wideout. It was supposed to be offensive pass interference on oh. the offense. Oh, that's the penalty has been declined. It's more foul. So it's uh, an offensive pass interference. Wistrom to the top of your screen, a little cross between he and Peter. This was supposed to be a little quarterback draw, I think, Keith, at the was. beginning. Yep. It's a good play by Hessler. The pass was fine. Uh, he had his hands under it. I think it was a good catch. But he, uh, somebody was called for offensive pass interference, and now Colorado will have to punt it. First punt from Nick Peach in the first quarter. Traveled only 17 yards. I see no wind indication of wind from the flags at all around the stadium. Newcomb is the deep man. And they go for it. Charrington back in the ball game. All the way down to the 20 19 yard line. Great call by Rick Neuheisel. Well, they go to their bag of tricks with their normal blocking group in there, including Black, a safety. He took it and gave it to Charrington, and away he went. It's going to have the snap is going to come right here in the back. It's going to lateral forward. Charrington's going to come out the other side. Snap to the right side, the up back. Little forward handoff behind the line of scrimmage. Been a miserable season for Colorado, and when you're five and five at the end of the year, why not take some chances? Absolutely. First down at the Nebraska 19-yard line. Prockman is in now as Charrington leaves after that run, and Prockman over the left side down to the 15-yard line. Just well, Black handled that ball pretty well, that didn't was, he? It was a well-executed, <laughs> well-executed play. Uh, special teams coach. Bobby Hawk for the Colorado Buffaloes. Of course, Osborne's crew knew that something might be coming. They thought they were ready for it. It was just blocked very well. On the 15-yard line, second down and six for Colorado now. That's from Nebraska 15. Trotman. He turned and ran right into the stack and got two yards on the play to the 13. So it is third and three. They're saying four, but it's not quite four. It's a big, uh, big chance. Play in the ball game. Yeah, no question. Well, the, the punt, too, the fake punt, because if they hadn't made it, it would have given Nebraska ball inside the Colorado 50 yard line. Right. Hessler standing there with the referee Randy Crystal watching the uh, play clock tick down to one. And then he called his timeout. So he's burning as much time as possible. It's he wants some conversation now. This third down play is coming up. Colorado with its biggest threat of the ball game, trailing 10 to nothing. They've moved the ball 78 yards on the ground in this possession. All of this movement on the ground. Started on their own nine-yard line. And this drive was that fake punt. And you've got Charrington back in there at the deep back. Fisk in front of him. Single coverage down here on the wide receiver. Third down. What a pass. Single coverage, just missed him. 
Cheverini was the man. And they'll go for three. It won't be Leslie, I don't think. It's probably Jeremy Aldrich who does the bulk of their field goal kicking. Eleven of thirteen yeah. on the year with a long of forty-eight. This spot will be back around the twenty yard line. Colorado gonna take another timeout. Yep, they let the play clock run down and take another timeout. And that reduces the time remaining in the first half to 32 seconds. All right, we're waiting for Colorado's field goal try with Jeremy Aldrich. Welch will do the snapping on the regular center on the play. Normally, it would be Brody Hefner a tight end, but Hefner is at the tight end position. The holder is Andy Mitchell, who's a punter. Only 32 seconds remaining in the first half. And Colorado trying to get on the board right here. And they do. A 30-yard field goal makes it a 10-3 ball game. It's a big three points for Colorado, Keith. Just getting on the board and, and, and making a game out of it. Now they've scored. They've broken the ice. They can shut out uh, Nebraska here in the last 27 seconds. They can get a little momentum going in at halftime. Provided, of course, Bobby Newcomb doesn't get loose here. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. 27 seconds is a lifetime to, to run a kickoff back. I think this Bobby Newcomb is going to turn out to be a very exciting football player at Nebraska. He's out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. But he's not out there. Shevin Wiggins and Joe Walker this time. Joe Walker's another one. He's a freshman. Uh, Nebraska using freshmen quite a bit these yeah, days. We see that all around, Everywhere. Keith, as we go around. And we don't see it here at Colorado. And Rick Neuheisel was saying yesterday that he's going to do that in the future. Play more true freshmen. Uh, because they're better than the guys that are backing up uh, right now. And... Uh, with the 85 scholarships and the injuries that you have and all that, we're seeing it everywhere we go, all the way around. But after three years of school, they can go to the pros if they're really good. Most of them are doing it. You're not going to keep the good ones anyway. That's right. Jason Leslie will kick it off now. Both place kickers, are two of the place kickers in this game are from Texas. Jason from Palacios. And he knocked it all the way to the corner of the end zone. And... Uh, they're not going to bring it back. Joe Walker will touch it, and they'll bring it out to the 20, and you've got 27 seconds remaining in the first half. Well, TGI... From the 20. This is Green, and I'm on Green up to the 25. Clock starts on that snap, and it's still going at 15. So Nebraska's had enough for the first half. They'll head to the clubhouse, and time will expire with a halftime score of Nebraska 10 and Colorado 3. We're going to go out and have a little shot now and turn you over to John Tonkin. score in Folsom Field, Boulder, Colorado. Nebraska 10, the Colorado Buffaloes 3. Bob's had his uh, three sugar cookies. He is uh, refreshed and ready to go. <laughs> now, we have had not one single three and out in this whole first half. We've only had seven possessions in the game. Nebraska's only had three scored twice. Colorado's had the ball four times, and, and every possession has been at least 
five plays. So there's been no three plays in punt, something you normally see in games like this. And Scott Frost has become the very first Nebraska quarterback ever to rush for a thousand yards. So he's headed for a thousand yards passing if he gets a chance. Colorado actually gaining more yards, 181 to 167. Time of possession is about the same. This is what Neuheisel wanted. He wanted to shorten the game, fewer snaps, just let the clock run, and pretty much had his way in the first half. Buffaloes will kick off to the Cornhuskers to start the second half of play. Leslie will kick it for the Buffs. Wiggins and Walker are deep for Nebraska. Place kicker knocks it way back in the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. First down. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, I had a chance to talk with Newhansel going off the field, and he said he's very happy with the way this team played in the first half. Uh, they kept, his team is still in this ball game. They're only seven points down. What they have to do is take advantage of their opportunities and not make the mistakes. Now, Tom Osborne came out and said what he wants to do is just be more consistent in the second half. But the only play that hurt him in the first half was the fake punt that led to three points for Colorado, Keith. All right, Tavadi, we've got to get rid of that goal yet. <laughs> From the 20, it's Amon Green. Uh, wide open up the middle. It's a foot race. Kelly can catch him. Yes. So Ben Kelly runs him down as Vershawn Jackson led him down the field, got him past the line of scrimmage, and Amon Green turns in a big play all the way to the Buffalo 17, and that is bad news for the Buffaloes. This is offensive line work at its best, Keith. Zadiska and Anderson, watches are going to come around on this little trap right up the center of the uh, defense. Right there, and there's a split right up the middle. 4-3-5 speed for Amon Green is caught from behind. And Green doesn't get a chance to go out and get a breath. They give him the ball right back and say, do it again, big guy, and here he goes. Touchdown. Like John McKay used to say, why? Ball ain't heavy. You don't belong to no union. Send him. And he made it pay off. Two plays, 80 yards, Amon Green. Is that the mark of a champion or what, Keith? Come out, they go in at halftime, they make some adjustments. Two plays, they go 80 yards. Trying to make it 17 to 3 with Chris Brown on the flesh. Tom says, that's just what I expected from you, son. <laughs> 17 to 3 Nebraska. Green now, 14 carries, 132 yards, and the touchdown. Two carries in that drive of 80 yards for the touchdown. Come on, you can now rest. Amon Green's 10th straight 100 yard game, and that's his career total to this point. It is also his longest rush of the year for Nebraska, for anybody for Nebraska. If he comes back next year, which there's every indication that he's going to, he'll have a chance to catch Mike Rozier in the record book. I've not heard one word to suggest that he was not coming back. No, and he's kind of been the forgotten guy this year, Keith. They talk about all these other running backs around, and Amon Green has, has done a nice job. He probably likes it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Keith, Bob, I talked to Tom Osborne about that fact just before the game. He said he's a low-key low guy. He doesn't talk much, and you're correct. That's why there hasn't been a lot of attention about it. But he's of the mind that if he stays another year, and that's strictly going to be his decision, that he is going to elevate his stock for the National Football League. He had a couple of guys he said that he thought would have been uh, would, would have been low first round picks if they had left early, stayed on in Nebraska, and they were high first round picks. And he thinks that'll be the case with Lamont Green. Okay? All right. And here's Colorado now. First down from the 20. Hessler is flushed. Looking for help. Throws it as far as he can for Cheverini. He caught it. Oh, great play. He was defended by Sweeney. Just about as good as you could do it. And he just went up and got it. And it's a big play for the Buffalo. It was a nice play by Hessler, too, Keith. He got outside. He saw his man one-on-one -on -one against Sweeney. The true freshman. It says, 
I trust Severini. If I get that ball down there, he's either going to catch it or he's going to take it away from the other guy. Lots of time, first down passing. That's what this gives you. Looking into the sun. Severini runs a little out and up. He was pushed out of bounds. The official marks it, but he comes right back in and can make the first play on the ball. That's different from the NFL. Hessler setting up a screenplay down the sidelines for Charrington. He's on his way. Touchdown. Colorado answers. Nebraska, two plays. Touchdown to start the half. Colorado, two plays. 80 yards. Touchdown. And we're right back where we were. Well, that's pretty exciting stuff. You said it, partner. Two plays both ways. Back where we started. Jeremy Aldrich for the point. And it's good. So, we have uh, used very little time. And we've put 14 more points on the board. Nebraska's two-play drive took 35 seconds. Colorado's answer, 32 seconds. <laughs> 14 points in a minute and seven seconds. The Buffaloes will kick off. Our score now, 17 to 10, Cornhuskers. Jason Leslie gets it up in the air, and it is Walker, two yards deep. He's coming. Sanders, I think it was. The Sanders. Man that got it. Sanders doesn't get there. There's a lane. He, yep. Let's go back to the touchdown. Nice call by Rick Neuheisel. Hard pass rush right here by these two ends. Watch the three offensive linemen get out to the screen's going to come over here. They're rushing hard from the bottom of the screen. That allows the offensive linemen to get out and three nice blocks downfield. Very close to having a third touchdown scored inside the two minutes. Woo. That was close. Penalty flag as the ball is given away to Amon Green, uh, Jay Sims, who's in there at tailback. And they're letting Amon rest a bit in this series. Referee threw that flag. Randy Crystal. Good ball. It's uh, very often noise, crowd noise, that causes that. Nebraska has been going on a lot of quick counts, Keith. And when you go up there, the offensive tackles, especially far, when they're far away from you, they can't hear you as well. And they might hear something in the stands or they may think you, it's all timing. And uh, it's very difficult to go on a quick count on the road. Sims. Buffalo defense is cooking right now. Gained about two yards on the play. It'll be second down and 13, and Amon Green has returned to the lineup. I think Osborne does a great job calling plays within his system, within the scheme. He knows the option in the pass game so well from what he does. Option. Green. You can hear that one. Terrell Cade led the defenders. Ryan Black, number six, did a nice job of stringing this out. Into the short side of the field. Not a lot of room to go. There's Black. Help from Cade. Ball at the 23, third down. About ten and a half. First down on the Colorado side of the field, and he beat Damon Wheeler. This is what
what this is what you get on the option a lot Keith look at this out here one on one there is nobody here in the middle everybody else is going up against the run top of your screen down the middle of the field there is nobody there that's what Frost looks at a lot because everybody wants to stop the run game and it puts the ball at the 46 yard line of Colorado Frost turns around and looks down the middle again the pass is caught by Matt Davison you remember him from the miracle in Columbia he shows up for the first time today well, Davison caught the deflection off of the foot of Wiggins in the end zone and New Heisel says wait a minute now they're starting to throw the football Osborne on the other side calling two straight pass plays because he knows it's single coverage downfield there look you go. at Scott Frost he's now at 1029 yards passing 1001 yard rushing up the middle goes Makovica. Eight yards. When you're fullback, running that first option up the middle is producing five, six, seven yards on, on that play. I mean, you've see got, you later. You've got to stop the fullback. If you don't stop the fullback, you've got no chance. You know, Tom's got everything going for him now. The pass game is open. The fullback is working. Got his quarterback uh, over a thousand yards rushing and passing in the same season. Second down. Ross turns back into the middle. Jesse Warren got a shoulder on him, but and I believe they've held him short of the first down. I don't know. That ball has marked well across the 15. He, uh, he has it. Yeah, he has it. Charlie McBride, was the uh, defensive coordinator for Nebraska, was talking about Scott Frost. And he was saying that, you know, he probably won't play in the NFL. He won't play in the NFL as a quarterback, but he's so tough and he's such a good athlete. He's a great athlete that he could probably see him playing strong safety or free safety in the pros. He's that good an athlete. He can do exhibitions at halftime, long jumping and pole vaulting. He's that good of an athlete, and I'm not being a smart aleck because he was a decathlete in high school. He was, and he won the state. He won the, the Nebraska State Shot Put Championship, Cross did. Mom was a pretty good athlete, too. An Olympian. She was an Olympian, yep. That's right. Mexico City. Ball is on the 11-yard line, where it is second down and seven. Green is your eye back. Oh, back to Vick with the fullback. Option. Green. Wiggins through the block. And it's touchdown, Cornhusker. I made that point when we very just got started today that Nebraska's wide receivers block. Yep. Wiggins. Just did his job right there. Two possessions for Nebraska in the second half, two touchdowns. And Brown for the point. Ten minutes and 37 seconds to go in the third quarter. 24-10. Nebraska kicking off and uh, the Buffaloes have yet to return a Chris Brown kickoff the option go ahead and run this just watch as the uh, wide receivers blocking in the system for Nebraska stop it right here look at this block here this one up here stay with your men get in their face you got a running back that's pretty good at finding the open area and, and Bob when I was a wide receiver on running teams the coaches always stress this one fact so a wide receivers block downfield can be the difference between a good 10 yard run and a great touchdown. That's why you block downfield. Were you a good running uh, running uh, blocker, Key uh, Lenny, for your uh, for your halfbacks? Oh, absolutely. I was all pro blocking receiver. <laughs> uh -huh. 
I missed that trophy on your wall. Yeah, the Steelers. I, I don't. I don't remember the Steelers blocking downfield. Take right that out of well, your trunk and hang it on your wall, Swanee. I will tell you, I blocked all the time. <laughs> Maybe one of the greatest blocks of all time was my second year when John Stallworth in the playoff game against the Oakland Raiders, when Franco ran the sweep. He came inside and blocked a, a linebacker uh, and a defensive end. Hit them both, a linebacker and a strong safety. Hit them both. Franco goes around the corner. We play in Super Bowl 10 where I'm MVP, and I will forever be grateful to John Stallworth. With that much of a memory on one play, I'm suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right, though, as Hessler gets it off, had a man right in his face. Downfield fighting for the ball as Tennyson McCarty, and he couldn't come away with it, defended. Well, as Mike Rucker was the man who was right in John Hessler's face, and I don't know how in the world John got it away, but he did. Eric Warfield was defending. An all-new drama tomorrow night on ABC at 8, 7 Central. Uh, Eric Roberts starring in C-16, followed by a special episode of Nothing Sacred on a special night. And then Dylan McDermott in the practice tomorrow night on ABC. It's third and long now, where you don't like to be on the 20-yard line. Third and eight. Pressure coming. Steps up. Gets it off. And is clubber. Well, he's, he doesn't have a lot of time to throw because the ends are forcing him to step up. And there's tight coverage downfield, Keith. Nobody was open. Tony Ortiz, number 37, who is uh, like a free safety up at a linebacker position, really popped it. You want to wear that to the kitchen he, table he, for supper? He put him Ooh. down, didn't he? Oh. Oh. John, go over and see him. Get a, somebody to tighten him up after that. Get a wrench. <laughs> Fourth down, they'll have to punt. It. They faked the last time they did this. I don't think you'll see it here. Not in this field position. And Peach gets a beauty. He and Ron's Newcomb all the way back to the 24-yard line. He's exciting. And he's finally out of bounds up around the 37-38. 53-yard punt, a 13-yard return, knocked out by Damon Wheeler at 9.22 to play in the third quarter. Well, Tom just passed 250. He's uh, feeling good, so he's talking about three now, 300. They run it inside with the hammer, Makovica, and he gets about three yards. You see that Paul, when he bowed out at 1A at 323, Osborne now, Tom uh, about to pick up 253 today, but uh, he's just had his full checkup. He feels pretty good. And, uh, you know, there are only six coaches, active coaches today, who have defeated the Tom Osborne team. And that guy right above him in the rankings there, Bobby Bowden, there have been 12 losses, and Bowden's beaten him six times. Six of the 12 six losses. Six of the 12 losses. You know what that looked like right there? Oh, what a ball. And it's rolling around, and I think the Huskers got it back. It was knocked out, and then Shevin Wiggins came across to recover it. So Colorado almost had a break. That looked like the old uh, A formation the Giants ran when Steve Owens was a coach up there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ryan Sutter had an outstanding shot at this ball and could not come up with it. Sutter 36, the bottom of your screen. The ball is going to get knocked out. Wiggins right there to get it. I think Pollock, the man who was involved in the play as well. So it's third down now, and the long three, and they don't get it. So the Colorado defense stepping up again. Is that the first three and out? Uh, that is the first three and out. First time today they've gone, either team has gone three and out. And certainly the first time for Nebraska. We had those opening two drives of the second half where they scored in two plays. Yeah. But they didn't get close to punting. Jesse Kutch is in. Jesse is out of Columbus. He's a senior, averaging just under 40 yards per punt. Damon Wheeler is waiting. He's got to look up into that very bright sun. 
Pressure's on him, but he gets it out. It's a nice kick. Very high. He's going to take a shot at it. Got by one, got by two, but four, five, and six. Killed him at the 15-yard line. 46-yard punt and a six-yard return. College football doubleheader tomorrow on ESPN. First, you've got Virginia Tech and Virginia from Charlottesville. And there's a lot hanging on that one. And then you've got Notre Dame playing Hawaii. That's at 8.30 Eastern time, 5.30 Pacific tomorrow in Honolulu. Notre Dame figuring if they can win it, they can get themselves a bowl bid. They disdained it last year, but this year they'll take it. Mainly because it gives Bob Davey and his staff an extra time to work on putting people into their system. Hessler's pass, good. First down at the 32-yard line to Phil Savoy, who's been very quiet of late, but suddenly he shows up and make it the 33-yard line. Savoy was a leading receiver, number 80. This is gonna be a slant. Bump and run on the outside. This is good to play calling and a nice throw by Hessler because it's quick, doesn't take a lot of time, and you get the ball to your big time receiver. Second catch of the day for Savoy for 27 yards. Rochelle yeah. Trotman, the deep back. Hessler back throw. Gets it away, good count on it. Good turn up field by Anderson. And Chris Anderson comes up for the first down at the 46 yard line. Hessler got his ball off in good rhythm. And Anderson turned it up just right. Passing game is starting to work because the Colorado running game has been there but behind the defense. If you look into the quarterback's eyes and this son, this son that he's looking into does make a difference. You, it, you, you can't see as clearly as you'd like to because everything is, is like a blur. You're seeing all these white jerseys over there. You just want to make sure you throw it to the black jerseys. Kessler, 8 of 16 for 185 yards now. And a touchdown and an interception. Troutman on a little cutback into the middle and uh, runs into a couple of trucks after a two-yard pickup. Jason Wiltz was one of those yeah. trucks. <laughs> Number 99. He plays opposite Jason Peter. And, uh, you know, Wiltz actually plays between Peter and Western. I mean, uh, you think he ever gets mentioned uh, now and then between those two guys? He's only a junior. 310 pounds from Yolens. He go home and get into that good Cajun cook in this summer. He'll come back bigger, stronger, and faster. On second down and eight, the pass to the sidelines is picked off. Didn't see the outside guy. Nope. This is Aaron Sweeney, the freshman. He was victimized for a great catch. Now he does a little payback and intercepts. It'll be Nebraska at the 27-yard line. The receiver broke it off. And looking into that bright sun, I don't think uh, you can see the problem the coach has yeah, got the, coach, the sideline. Exactly, Keith, and that's what I was just talking about. You, you can see some, but you can't pick up everybody in the secondary as quickly as you would like to. Hey, Bob, Bob, when you're the quarterback, I got back behind where Hessler's at, and I'm looking to my right. Every time you look to the right, what you have to do is you squint. The sun's so bright coming over the rim of the stadium, you squint, and you can't possibly see the whole field when you're squinting. Yeah. So the Huskers get it back, leading 24 to 10. But the Colorado defense right now just downright nasty. Armand Green is taken down right about the line of scrimmage. Turnovers have been the plague of the Colorado Buffaloes this year, Keith. It's just one, one thing after another. Two turnovers today for New Heisel's group. Well, Rick's getting seasoned as a coach. A little heat this year. Yeah, you know, I expected him to be win ten wins, ten games every year. That comes from spoiling him. You spoil him too much. Here is the quarterback Frost, and Frost to uh, get it up to about the 30-yard line, and they'll call him down. The Buffs came out with the ball. The officials say no, no. Doing this for uh, for a few years. You know, you were talking about Tom Osborne, only six six uh, 
Active coaches. Active coaches, coaches yeah. 12 losses. Another legend retiring tomorrow. We ought to talk about Keith. Buffalo's bouncing the defense a little bit. Scott cross checks off, goes to a shotgun. Here comes that tailback business, and he pitches it off to Amon Green, and Green's going to have a first down for Nebraska. Eddie Robinson at uh, Grambling is retiring tomorrow after 57 years as head coach. And, uh, we wish him all the best. Did you ever do a Grambling game? No, nope, you know never did. I never spent as much time with Eddie Robinson as I would uh, wish I could have. But I got a hunch you spend a day with that man and you'd be richer for it. Green's rushing in uh, the ball game. He's and penalty flags all over the place on this one. But Amon Green, eight carries, 103 yards in the third quarter. So he's having a whoppy, uh, whopping day. Good ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yards penalty. First down. Here's the Nebraska option. Nebraska fullback has carried it eight times, 28 yards. The quarterback has kept it more than he's uh, given it to the fullback. 71 yards for the quarterback. And then the pitch to the halfback has gotten 37 yards. It kind of controlled the option pretty well today, I'd say. Well, you might be wondering, where's Green's long run in that? Well, it wasn't off the option. He's a little back for me. Right. There goes Green here, weaving his way. And knocked out of bounds, finally, by Ryan Sutter. Green came into the game averaging 150 yards, and... Um, that, that put him number three in the nation in, uh, in total yards, rushing almost 1,500 yards coming in. Another 166 here today. He's out, and Sims is in at the eye back. One little breather after that last carry. Second down, five. Sims. I don't know. These guys are, it's amazing. I mean, they, they run him into a crowd like that, and all of a sudden they come out to the other side. Well, and, and the amazing thing about it is they had 10 guys in <laughs> yeah, the box that time. Right. I mean, they had one wide receiver covered by a corner. Everybody else was lined up in tight. Sims, incidentally, is the senior citizen on this football team. He's 26 years old. That was an eight-yard run for him. Ball is now at the Colorado 48-yard line, and Scott Cross lets it go down the middle. Incomplete, thrown too deep, intended for his pass-catching tight end, Sheldon Jackson, and Scott's holding his head because Jackson had a step. Uh, Scott should have given a little bit, a little bit more air, lofted a little bit, give him a chance to run under it. Nebraska 41 rushing plays, only seven passing. And that's just about uh, the way they do things. 24-10, Cornhuskers are leading right now. And yes, they bought the oxygen tanks because you are, yeah, it affects you, right? I'm personal testimony very, to that. Very thin air. <laughs> <laughs> Going up the stairs there, huh, Hoss? Puffing and puffing, got boy. Woo. Ross turns it inside. And that's about a two-yard pickup. And here's John. Keith, time for the Burger King play of the day. Texas A&M against Texas. And running back Dante Hall had a terrific day. Takes this pitch here and then takes off. Beats a couple of tackles. Then along the sideline, gets it deep into Texas territory and sets up Sir Parker's second touchdown run of the game. A&M over Texas, 27-16. Keith. R.C. Slocum and the Aggies will be playing these Cornhuskers next Saturday afternoon in San Antonio. Cross pass, good. Drilled it right to Shevin Wiggins. And goes down on his knees right at the 32-yard line, and that's the first down. The passing game for the Cornhuskers is not complicated. It, it doesn't have to be. It's because they run the ball so well, you're always going to get single coverage. And if you just look around, 
There's not much to read. Just look around, find an open guy, and throw it to him. Six of eight, 100 yards on the day for Frost. First down. Bellies it off to his fullback. This time he gave it to him. Remember that old belly series that Bobby Dodd used to run down at Georgia Tech when you know that a little more activity. It wasn't exactly like the option penalty flag here, but they'd kind of go down the line and then they'd pull it out and pitch it. No, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Didn't you have papers up there at Purdue? <laughs> <laughs> it's against Nebraska. It's a block below the, below the waist. Time remaining in the third quarter, 142, as you see. Illegal block on the offense. It'll be a 15-yard penalty, and it remains first down. That's a big penalty because it's uh, it's in the book in behalf of safety. Yes, it is, and it's, it's it's a good it's a good rule. You don't see it called too often. The coaches around are coaching that pretty well. Sometimes, though, when you get yourself committed to throwing the block, and the guy you're trying to block, he causes it. Yes, runs away from you. Yep. You slide down, you hit him, you start high, and you slide down. It's, that, that should be a legal block, though. First down and 22. Here's a little screen. Drop. That's him. Oh, boy, did he have a lane. And he had... He had three offensive linemen and one... He had 18-wheelers in front of him. <laughs> and one little defensive back. Hmm. Take a look. Uh, watch the right side of your screen as this develops. You're going to see a Look at three, oh. three offensive linemen and Rashidi Barnes out there to take them on. Uh, Rashidi said, thank you very much, Lord. <laughs> yeah, well, I won't call you. you for 30 days. <laughs> Second down and 22. Now, he saw his man, Cheatham, was not available. Kelly had him pretty well covered. It's good coverage by Kelly. Yep. That's right. I mean, he's impressive. I like him. He's a freshman. Number one. Red shirt freshman. That's right. He's third in the nation in kickoff returns. Has won this year for a touchdown. He can run. I like the name. Ben Kelly. Dog could be a marshal. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Third and 22. Option. Nobody out there. But because of the penalty and all of that, it will not be a first down. Ball come out. Huskers kept it. Blake got it. Third and 22. Nebraska had uh, no problem running the option. He got two good blocks by his wide receivers downfield, but it, it did come out. Oh, yeah, it did come out. Lake Didn't got back it. on it. Chris Brown has made his last 11 field goals. This one is end time. 46 yards. Big leg on South Lake, Texas. Got it. I wish I had a golf swing like that. Yeah, uh huh? Hit it that straight. 20 seconds to play in the third quarter, and Nebraska leads by 17, 27 to 10. Like that. <laughs> it sounded like you after you hit a couple of bad drives. It's time to go. <laughs> You start sounding like that. Get out of town on the first wagon. <laughs> That's what we were talking about. That's next Saturday on ABC. Wax starts it off, and then uh, down to San Antonio, and then to Atlanta. Sonny Lubick at uh, Colorado State's had a good year, hadn't he? Sonny Lubick's a good football coach. Yes, yes, yes. Kelly Hayes came down through the snow, 
with his camels and two buffaloes and made it. If he goes home, Al, he might not get back on Monday night. It's snowing in the high point. He's talking about his spotter sitting over there next to him. He, his play-by-play -play guys just love their spotters. Take care of them. They mention their names every now and then. We send a tank for them when we have to. Yes, sir. Brown gets it up in the air. Got a lot of air under it, but it's still deep. And uh, Ben Kelly says, no, thank you. I'm not as big as anybody I see coming down wearing white, and I'm not going to give him a chance to beat on me, so I'll take it at the 20. about Sonny Lubick in that uh, WAC championship game. Uh, Dennis Francione at New Mexico done a great job this year. Hasn't Fantastic he? turnaround. 30, was it 36 years since they were in the yep. bowl game. Yep. Almost as long as the Cougars. Good job, Dennis. First down at the 20 for the Buffs. They're down by 17, and this ought to be the last play of the third quarter. They sack him, and he's fortunate he kept the ball. Jason Wilkes led the surge. And we've played three, 27 to 10. ABC Sports presentation of college football back after this message. And the word from our ABC station. Colorado second down and 20 and John Hessler being sacked but it was better than to throw the ball away but in the process of trying to protect it he almost lost it as the Nebraska front came and got him now it is second down and they're calling it 18 but it's more than that folks trust me uh -oh. lineman stepped on him again and down he goes <clears throat> That is the fault of the line, Keith. They can't take a step back before the quarterback gets out of there, obviously. They're going to step on him every time. It's a, it's a fault of one of the guards on the center. It's the right guard again. It's the same one that did it, the left guard, the same one that did it the last time. Yeah, but, Bob, sometimes if the quarterback is standing there with his feet parallel as opposed to staggered, he makes it more difficult for himself, doesn't he? No way, Lenny. No and, way. You know, you're, you've got to get anything up here about quarterbacks. <laughs> you think, what are you talking to? <laughs> oh, my goodness. The Nebraska front is just destroying everything right now for the Buffaloes. Mike Rucker and Jason Wilkes and Jason Peter and Grant Wistrom. You used a good term. They just destroy Keith. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, just sends these guys after quarterbacks. And they do a nice job of destruction. No. So Nick Peach is in the punt. He had a 53-yarder a few minutes ago. He needs another one. But the most important thing is don't step back because it'll be two points for the other guys. Bobby Newcomb is waiting, looking up into that bright sun. The angle's getting better, though, as the shadows creep out. And the kick is out of the arch. A good one, too. He's turned in a couple of dandies. Runs Newcomb back, and Newcomb accepts the ball. And now you get a quick penalty flag thrown across the way. And it may very well be on Colorado. Yeah, it's it's uh, the same thing that we've seen all year long, Keith. Guys getting too close to the, the punt return man, not giving him that two-yard uh, buffer. of the two yard halo be a five yard penalty first down on Nebraska well that'll move Nebraska over to the Colorado side of the field at the 47 and I will say to you folks you can't give Nebraska the football on your side of the field well that's a penalty we've seen called all year long we've seen that called more than than fouls on uh, on on uh, 
other other types of fouls on the kicking game. That is the number one foul we've seen this year. Quick summary. Nebraska rolling up the yardage on the ground, as you see. Green having a big day, 166. Colorado again hurt by turnovers, and Charrington had uh, was having a good ball game. Dwayne Charrington, you hear a lot about him. I expect he's just sophomore. Here's Nebraska now first down at the Colorado 47-yard line. And Frost looking to damage him. Got a man wide open, and he missed it. I mean, there wasn't anybody around. There was nobody within 20 yards of him. The biggest decision was, do I keep going to the, to the center of the field, or do I break to the outside? Bobby Newcomb, number 12, had drifted out into the middle. And I'll guarantee you, if he catches it, there isn't anybody in a black shirt that's going to catch it. Yeah, watch this from the end zone. He's going to come from the right side of your screen, play action fake. I mean, look at the middle of the field. Yeah, see, right there, stop it there. Here's the receiver. Now, just watch. Frost is going to throw it to the center of the field. I think he was wide open. The receiver broke back to the outside. My goodness. It's never that wide open. Mm. You, you always have a defensive man to run the route off of. And there was no reference point there. <laughs> That means if you're, if I'm in the open ocean, I've lost no matter. Right? <laughs> well, I guess. You know, you have, you know. Get him a compass. Sophisticated passing teams have rules and regulations about pass routes and things, but uh, I don't think I don't think Nebraska works that long and hard on their pass game. This is the best starting point the Huskers have had all day. It's third down and eight from the 45. Cross throws, and it's through the hands of Shevin Wiggins. He could have touched that one a little bit. And probably yeah, that's work. Oh, so it's fourth down. He had some pressure on him. Uh, Scott knows he's a little upset that he could have completed this one, but there was a little pressure on the quarterback. He could have caught that. Could have caught it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a wide receiver, he'd say, well, <laughs> it was a little too high. Ty Gregorak, that uh, true freshman of Colorado, was getting into uh, Scott Frost's face that time, forcing Ty to throw it probably before he wanted to. So Jesse Cush comes on, 36 and 46, his previous two punts. And that's an old knuckleball. That's going to go. Look at that thing bounce just exactly right for the Huskers. They're going to down it at the nine yard line with 12 minutes and 25 seconds to play in the ball game. 20 or worse. So it has been field position favoring Nebraska virtually all day, but that's a good play there. Pass completed to Brody Hefner. First time the tight end has seen it today, and it moves the chain. And he gets great pass protection on first down, Keith. If they threw on first down all day, John would have a lot of time to throw. But when they have to get the good protection on third and eight, third and nine, it's just not there. 52,738 at the ballpark. Second down and one after the completion. And there's a penalty flag, and he's... I think he might have had his first down, but let's see about the old flag with Top carrying it. Could be almost anything in that melee. Holding Colorado. Oh, my goodness. Well, they've had a lot of holding in that offensive line this year, Keith. A lot of penalties, uh, turnovers. Well, I was watching the tape of the Washington Washington State game the other day, and I've never seen so much laundry on the field. Yeah. It was well, incredible. I mean, you can whistle a ball game to death. You can, if, you, if you have a mind to, you can call a penalty on every well, play. Since they changed the, the blocking rules for the offensive linemen, where you didn't have to keep your hands into your chest, you could stick your hands out. Now you see the first move of an offensive lineman a lot of time is they go outside the frame yep. of the defensive man to right. contain him. Uh, you could call holding on every play. On every play, if you had a mind to. Sure. That's an 11 yard penalty, so it's second down and 12. The ball is thrown. And it is incomplete. Thrown behind him, yeah. Thrown behind him, Phil Savoy, and Phil could not make a turn and get it, though he did have a little daylight over there. Oh, 
There's a look from behind the offense. Quick passing. The ball was out in front of him a little bit. He might have some running room. Number 16 is Sweeney, the true freshman. They've thrown a lot of balls in his direction today. He's got one interception, too. Yes, he does. Third down and 12. That's a bad pass. We had a defensive, he had a man right in his face. I think an offensive man was backed up into his face. Yeah. You just can't get much business done against Nebraska on third down and long yardage. Not when you're dancing around inside your 10 yard line either. They are going to lay their ears back when you're in, they got you in that fix. So here comes Nick Peach for his fourth month of the day. Last time he kicked out of his end zone, he got 49 yards. That can be returned. Taken by Lance Brown and can't turn himself upfield too quickly, so he's at the 42-yard line of Colorado. First down for the Huskers. 27 to 10. The Huskers have uh, control of the ball game right now against Colorado. And Saturday on one Eastern regional action here on ABC as we have Penn State at Michigan State. We have Georgia at Georgia Tech. Check your local listings for the game in your area. And then after football at 430 Eastern, the Skins game. Fred Couples withdrew from the Skins game, uh, replaced by David Duvall. Well, he goes with Tom Lehman, Mark O'Mara, and Tiger Wood. This is Lamont Green carrying the ball for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Where are they playing those skin games, Keith? Uh, La Quinta. La Quinta. Rancho La Quinta in Palm Springs area. Mm -hmm. It's been raining out there. I don't know how the weather is now. But these Nebraska Cornhuskers are making a statement. Uh, they scored 70 odd points last week. They had their scare and in uh, Columbia against Missouri and had a miracle to help them bail it out. Makovica is just planted by Murkison on that carry. On second down and short, but it's still close to the first down because of the offensive line, sir. One of the problems this year for Colorado is that man right there, Murkison, has missed six games. He's their best defensive player. And they certainly have had a multitude of, of problems this year, both on offense and defense. But losing him for six of the uh, games has been a problem. Aaron Taylor commenting on Nebraska's position now as they are second in the national polls and at one time with third and all this bouncing around and they were a little miffed because they lost a place despite the fact they won. But Taylor said this about the circumstance of the Cornhuskers and this national championship business. Without considering Nebraska in this, it's just not a national championship. You know, that's the way we feel around here. And, you know, we've had the consistency throughout the, throughout the past years that, you know, hey, if we're not there, it's it's not right. <laughs> well, they're going to be there. Well, I agree. They they they're in they're in the hunt, Keith. If something would happen to Michigan at the Rose Bowl, they could win the the third championship in the last four years. Cross is going to the bundle on third and very short. He won't get it as he overthrows Kenny Cheatham with Ben Kelly defending on the play. But I don't think unless Michigan gets beat that Nebraska will have a chance because I think a lot of the players will remember how lucky they were and fortunate against Missouri to win that game. But you got to uh, got to have a little luck on the high road. Oh, there's no question about that. And Osborne has done a great job. They've got the first down. They only needed about a half yard as Scott Frost sneaks it over. Well, here's Frost's comment on Michigan. People around the country, especially the media, are, are kind of in in, infatuated with Michigan right now simply because uh, they've won a couple big games and I think they're kind of the new kid on the block as far as uh, in, in the national title hunt lately and people just seem to be in love with them. And there's some truth to that. Well, I think there is, but I think Michigan's schedule has been much tougher too, Keith, in all honesty, than the schedule that Nebraska has played. But still, you, you line them up and you play them and you beat them, bring on, you know, I'm sure Nebraska says, bring on anybody, we'll play them and beat them. Oh, we'll damn sure try. <laughs> Here's your option. 
Little thudding with that one as Sutter absorbs the shoulder from Green. Sometimes these big old running backs will uh, just drop the shoulder, and if they get a defender just right, I mean, they can turn him upside down. And that was almost the case there. This is the last weekend of the regular season, Keith, and, uh, you know, as we're liking to do sometimes, you know, talk about the, the surprise uh, teams of the year a little bit, and who had good years and who didn't. Let me make this point about Sutter, however, as... Uh, Green runs in the middle. Sutter has 15 tackles in this ball game, yeah. so Ryan has been very busy. He is the free safety, and uh, when you have an option team, free safeties are usually going to make a lot of tackles. You got nine and a half minutes to play in this ball game, and Nebraska is chewing on the clock right now, leading by a score of 27 to 10. They've got all the points they feel they need, I think. I think your alma mater had a great year, huh? Yes, they did. Winning the uh, Pac-10, Washington State. Nobody expected them to go 10-1. Great Mike, for Mike Price. Mike Price did ball. an outstanding job. And here's <laughs> Scott Frost had a touchdown in his hands in the corner of the end zone if he'd have thrown it down there, but he elected to go instead to Green, and Hannibal Navis just ate him up. Cheatham was on a fly to the corner. That's what Cheatham was saying. You know, what was wrong with me? Well, <laughs> Scott says, hey, I had some men in my face and I couldn't see you, partner. <laughs> so this is going to bring up. See, he couldn't see downfield. Yeah. And, uh, he says, if you take a look downfield. If he's not there, get rid of it quickly to your outlet. It'll bring in a punt. Jesse Cush will punt. It'll be his fourth of the day, and he should hit it around the 45-yard line with Damon Wheeler deep for Colorado. Trying to hang it up there, but that's in the end zone. So it'll come out to the 20 where the Buffaloes will have it. First down. Uh, we've got a new quarterback for the Colorado Buffaloes, Jeremy Weisinger. 200-pound sophomore from Uvalde, Texas, has come in. He didn't get to play much this year. He was in the weight room working out, dropped the weight on his leg and cracked it. But he's healed and he's sacked. Jason Peters says, welcome, Jeremy. That man right there may well be the first defensive lineman taken in the NFL draft, uh, Keith. He, he's an interior defensive lineman, so he doesn't get the big numbers that Andre Wadsworth and Grant Westrom get. He's on the inside, so he fights all the guards and the tackles, is often double teamed, and he just fights through two or three guys there. He is something else. Now it is second down and 15. Colorado. Weisinger's pass to the sidelines is incomplete, intended for Phil Savoy. Thrown wide of the target. Talking about surprise teams this year, my alma mater did all right. Yes, they did. Joe, Joe Tiller. Joe Tiller did a great job of uh, restoring the winning tradition here at Purdue. And he brought a new kind of an offense to the Big Ten, didn't he? Well, he did. He, you know, he, they said, oh, I don't know if that uh, that one back, uh, three wide receiver passing could win in the Big Ten in the weather and all that. Well, he, he said, have you ever seen the weather in Wyoming in November? <laughs> That's right. And Harvard went 7 and 0 in the Ivy League. Harvard. Yes. Harvard. Yes. 7 and 0. Third down play. Third and long. Weisinger is down. Rucker is there and Ortiz. Those two got him. But the speed of Ortiz coming from behind. Well, he's a he's a safety size, you know. He's 215 pounds. He's built like he looks rangy. He's a, he's like a linebacker. A yep. He's he's a he's a safety playing linebacker yep. with great speed. Ortiz, right there. Everybody's making a, a big to do. Uh, is Andy Mitchell coming in to punt? Under uh, Colorado, unable to do anything with that possession. But much to do being made of UCLA. But I thought going into the season, the Bruins are going to be pretty good. Well, they lost their first two. One to they, you know they. If they hadn't have lost to Washington State in August, 
they would be going to the World Series, right? Lost a close game there and won to Tennessee the following week, and that's all they lost. Mitchell up the field, and it is caught by Shevin Wiggins for Nebraska, and he puts it back at the Colorado 47-yard line, where it's a first down for the Huskers. Six and a half minutes to play, Colorado 27 to 10. The game will select the Chevrolet most valuable players. Six and a half million bucks given by Chevrolet to the scholarship funds of the colleges and universities of the country over the last 25 years. And right up the middle comes Amon Green. Brought down by Ryan Sutter. Now, let me tell you a little story here. Amon Green and Scott Frost have both two one, they're, they're both thousand yard rushers in 1997. Yeah. It is only the second time in Nebraska history they've had two thousand yard rushers out of the same backfield. Those were Calvin Jones and Derek Brown in 1992. You know, the, the surprising thing to me is that, that Frost is the first one thousand yard rusher at quarterback that Nebraska's had. I mean, you think about all the good running quarterbacks. Tommy Frazier yeah. never gained a thousand yards rushing. Turner Gill. All the good guys they've had running the football at Nebraska. Jerry Taggy was a pretty good runner, too. He wasn't quite as swift as these guys. It's first down for the Huskers just outside the Colorado 30-yard line, and they're just pounding along as Makovica picks up his normal five yards. They're, they're, they're heading toward 400 yards, which is their average per game. And, and with that, this will make the 11th rushing title for Tom Osborne in his 25 years at Nebraska. They're going to win the rushing title this year, and this will be the 11th time. You know, we can't go, we can't do this surprise teams or teams that had good years without mentioning Larry Smith at Missouri. No, sir. Uh, He's done a heck of a job. And Bob Simmons at Oklahoma State. Yep. I mean, uh, a couple teams here in the Big, uh, big 12. Ball come loose. Colorado said it did. Officials are still wondering it. Yes. Buffaloes get it. So they squeezed it loose. Ryan Black came out of there with it. Ryan Sutter is going to get this ball out of there, Keith. He's got like 15, 16 tackles. Number 36. At Sutter, he just pulls it out of there. Black picked it up. And that's the first turnover for Nebraska today. And Colorado will get the ball at the 23-yard line. There's four minutes and 59 seconds to play in the ball game, and the Buffs would dearly love to put one on the board. All right, who's the best offensive player you've seen this year? Caden McNown ain't bad. McNown, Ryan Leaf, I saw Leaf. Uh, how about Peyton Manning? Uh... And we got a timeout call right here. John Hessler back in at quarterback. And there's time. We'll be back. Twenty-seven to ten, and the sun now starting to slide down toward the top of the flat irons, and uh, those old boys need a little help. <laughs> they need a hot tub in a hurry. Back goes Hester to throw the ball. Good pass. The boy is there. Good for a first down. Fights his way to the 43-yard line. The ball came out, but they're going to call him down. So you can move your change. You were talking about offensive players, Bob. I would agree that Ryan Leaf, what he's done for Washington State to get them where they are. I mean, he's a great big old strong guy who's well, he's tough he's as a nut. Somebody that should be considered at least. Yep. Uh, yep. Ricky Williams has had a great year for Texas. Despite a poor year by his team. Yeah, exactly. How about defensive players? Uh, we've seen some good ones. Yeah, well, some right here. Yeah. <laughs> Number 98. 98 Wistrom and 55 Peter. At Stiggers with his uh, first catch of the day. And uh, Jay Foreman makes the tackle. And Wadsworth, Andre Wadsworth Andre at Florida Wadsworth State. Uh, Charles Woodson at Michigan. 
Antoine Winfield at Ohio State. <laughs> That's fresh in our minds, isn't he? Oh, boy. Uh, Did he play last week? Uh -huh. I think there were three of him out there. Second down and four. Tesla's got it. He's in rhythm right now. It's nailed right to the numbers on Chris Anderson and another first down. And that'll put the ball down about the Nebraska 36-yard line. I think one of the reasons Rick may have put uh, Hessler back in the game because this is his last game at Colorado, fifth-year senior. Well, he'd, get, he'd been beat up terribly in the previous series down there inside his 10-yard line. Yeah. They had to give him a chance to collect yeah. the slokes. First down. Going deep. Just tipped over his head. Number three, Eric Warfield saved a touchdown because Stiggers was there. Warfield has made a few good plays today and has uh, had an interception. New Heisel said we're going to test him deep. Nice play. Well, this crowd of 52,738, I'll bet you last week didn't know they were going to be able to sit out in the sunshine oh, today. Oh, boy. That's been the biggest Beautiful surprise day. of all is yep. the weather here today. Mm. Second and ten from the Nebraska 36. There was, the only place to throw that ball was where he threw it on the last play. This time he pulls it down and runs for the first down. Hit out of bounds, and that's a flag. There was a penalty flag thrown at the line of scrimmage, and there's another flag thrown over there where John Hustler was hit after he went out of bounds. But I tell you, this is <laughs> This is a tough kid. He is a tough guy. He's smiling. He knows. He knows what's going on. That's McFarland, number four. They are way out of bounds. You can't see it. But they were about four or five feet out of bounds. Well, they're debating over the first penalty versus the second penalty. They've been a holding in the backfield. How about the comeback players of the year, Keith? Uh, guys that may have been injured last year or came back and played. Sam Coward is uh, one that comes Jumps to mind. Jumps out, yeah. Uh, Skip Hicks was at UCLA. Running back was buggered up a yes, bit last year and has come back for a big year. There's two flags on the play. There's holding on the offense. Then we have a dead ball, personal foul on the defense. The penalties will be enforced in the order of occurrence going first 10 yards one way, back 15, dead ball foul. It's an automatic first down for Colorado. So the net of that is Colorado picks up five yards, and, and they also get a first down. And a first down. That's right. But I, I, I think Sam Coward has really come. I mean, he has had a sensation. The linebacker Florida from Florida State, State uh, two years ago against Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl, he tore up his knee, sat out 96, and came back uh, this year in 97. has just been outstanding. First down for the Buffaloes at the Nebraska 34, 337 to play in the ball game. Pressure coming. Passes away. It is caught by Truckman. And what might well have been a big sack and a big loss turns into about a two-yard gain. Everybody was coming. McFarland was coming toward Hesper. I mean, uh, you got to figure that uh, John Hesper's made out, made out of old saddle leather. Because He's tough. He takes a whipping boy. Charlie McBride, Ooh. the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, likes this kid. He said, He's tough. You know, he gets after all the quarterbacks, Nebraska does, but uh, he said this kid is tough. He keeps coming back. Let's go to Rick Neuheisel, a comment from him on, uh, and the media around this area has pounded old Rick pretty good this year, and I'm not totally sure that he had all of it coming. So a lot of it was kind of smart aleck stuff, but uh, this is a comment of Neuheisel as he sits in his position today at the end of this season. I am going to coach like I know how to coach, and and I'm going to trust my instincts as to how to run a program. Uh, I said when I took this job that I can live with failure if I do it my way. I would be very disappointed if I try to change who I am and my belief system uh, just to satisfy those who would have me be another way. 
part of the reason some of the uh, riders and the people on on him around here is because of some of the off-field things, taking the kids uh, bowling and canoeing and skiing and rafting and things like that. He says this is supposed to be fun, and uh, because of that, they correlate that to being a lack of discipline in this program, uh, which I don't think there is a lack of discipline. Here's Stickers, touchdown! That's as pretty as you can do it. He'll remember that one forever. Hessler to Stiggers for the touchdown. Aldrich for the point. It's good. And it's 27-17 with 3 minutes and 16 seconds to play in the ball game. You got the three wide receivers. The three defensive backs. The bottom receiver is going to go run down and run to the deep post. There's going to be three white shirts back there. The watch as Hessler throws it to the outside man far enough to get it over the outstretched arms of number 16, Sweeney. That's just a good throw. Good separation between the receivers and a good throw for the touchdown. And it's a 10-point ball game, and a 10-point ball game with Nebraska in the fourth quarter ain't bad. Well, we talked about it early on, Keith, maybe in the opening, was that Nebraska, what they wanted to do was come out here and first of all win. But secondly, they want to come out here from some style points because this is a common opponent with Michigan, the number one team in the nation, Nebraska second. Colorado played Michigan. I think they beat them 27 to three. three. Yep. Now the score 27-17, and if any of the pollsters are comparing like they some of them do, uh, well, this is what the Nebraska was thinking about coming in. Well, the Huskers have the good hands people up on the front now, don't they? Yes, they do. Big grid, and they'll try to pop it along the ground and get a bounce. Aha, uh -huh. the other guy kicked it. He's got a shot at it. It hit a coin husker and bounced off of it. And the Buffaloes have it. This the fullback. Darren Fisk dove on that ball when it bounced off one of the coin huskers. And I think it might have been, looks like it might have been 85. Uh, debates, a tight end. So they had a tight end up there, but it hit him in the chest. But there was a surprise right there as a the guy took, coming across. Yeah, these guys over there didn't expect the ball to come their way. And at the last minute, there it is, and there's the fumble. That's tricky stuff. The place kicker was aimed the other way, and the guy alongside of him popped it over there, and it worked. And Colorado's got the ball at the 45. And Hessler has one man to throw to. It is Phil Savoy at the 33-yard line of Nebraska. Three minutes and 18 seconds to play, and it's a 10-point game. The defensive backs for Nebraska are young, freshmen and true sophomores. The strength is in the pass rush. They need to get some pass rush going on Colorado. Robert Toller checks in at a wide out for Colorado on first down. Hessler back, getting better protection, completes a pass to corner, out of bounds at the 18-yard line, pushed down by Foreman. Move the chains again. This looks like a flashback to two years ago when Hessler and Neuheisel and the Colorado offense were running up and down the field. Two forty-nine to play in the game. His confidence is soaring right now. 
This was passed too high and too hard to Stiggers. Stiggers is only 5'7. That ball was thrown very hard and it was too high. That's one of the things that happens with a, a, a passer who comes over the top. Sometimes you let it go too soon, sometimes you let it go too late. And accuracy is a problem. Jason Peter. You know that defensive front for Nebraska might be getting a little tired. Yeah, I think so, especially in this thin air, Keith. Yep. Here they come. Kessler's pass. Down. That's why you play him. Aldrich for the point. It's a three point ball game with two minutes and 37 seconds to play. So look at the protection, it's there. Ortiz can't get there. He just barely got the ball off in time. Toller, who is a backup wide receiver, only caught five balls coming into the game, makes his biggest reception of the year. And Hesler now has gone to 250 yards of the ball game, and he's jacked. And that man you saw there huffing and puffing, that was Jason Peter. They are getting a little winded. It's tough to pursue, 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 and that's what they've been doing all day. And it may just have bought that fraction of time that he needed. Hester has 250 yards in the second half alone. Not a bad way to go out, John. Well. You onside kicked when you were down by 10. Now you're down by three. With two minutes and 37 seconds. Kick it deep and trust your defense. And Colorado has one timeout left. Kick it deep and trust your defense. Huh? I think if you keep kicking deep to, to, to uh, Nebraska, you never get it back. I, I think you got to go with the onside kick. I'll tell you one thing, debates, they got his attention this time. Here's your onside kick. Oh, goodness. It went right through Ben Kelly's hands. He had a shot at it at the 49-yard line, and it just couldn't, either couldn't quite reach it. It went right through his hands, I thought. And they had a great here's shot. A penalty flag. It's a good kick. It's going over. Now it takes a big hop. Watch Kelly. Oh, you could have caught that. He, he lost his vision, I guess, behind the, the corn husker. <laughs> and you had a flag that was thrown by the linesman here. Out of bounds by the kicking team. The receiving team is elected to take the ball at the out-of-bounds spot. And, and the flag has to do with the ball going out of bounds, not any kind of a foul on a team. So they will just simply take the ball where it went out of bounds and took it to the 49-yard line. So Nebraska leading by three, 27-24, with 2.33 to play in the game. At the Colorado 49, we'll give it to Green. Green is locked by Murkison. There's a gain of two yards. Nebraska, who averages over 500 yards per game, just needs some first downs. Jeff Lake holding his shoulder has come off the field. Surprised that Colorado is not using the one timeout that they have left, Keith. 
Once the time is off the clock, you can never get it back on. 150 and counting. Option. Cross takes it down. Murkison hit it. But he still fights his way forward to the 45. And Colorado. A player came off the sidelines and called timeout on the Colorado side. And the headlinesman gave it to him. And they're going to charge it. Yes, it'll be charged to Colorado. And that's their last one. I think Neuheisel was uh, talking to, this, to the line judge over there on the sideline and just called it himself. The player came in and got right in his face. 27-24. 144 to play in the ball game, and it is third down and six for Nebraska. So figuring that uh, they're not going to get this first down, they'll have to punt it. So he's giving his defense a chance to step up. Next Saturday. The WAC Championship with Colorado State, New Mexico at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship at 4.30. These Cornhuskers and Texas A&M. And then your SEC Championship down at the Georgia Dome. And that will be Tennessee or Georgia because they play on Saturday. And uh, Auburn, which has won the Western Division title. That'll be at 8 o'clock in the evening at the Georgia game. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Peyton Manning and his uh, troops do his little uh, number. They got a tough game this weekend with Vanderbilt. Six. Third down and six now. And the crowd, some had gone home. They're up. It's Makabeka. He didn't get it. It's going to be close. Well, he had to go to the 39. They've got him marked outside the 40. It's fourth down. Osborne's decision, if you go for it, which you think you can make it, it's about fourth and one. If you don't make it, you turn the ball over on about the 40-yard line. Right. But you got to think that the team that, going. Has, that has rushed, been the, the nation's best rushing team 11 times in the last 25 years can make a yard when they need it. It's a long yard. They have to burn a timeout because the play clock is was running down. But they've got uh, they got two left. It's uh, that's a long yard, Bob. That's pretty close to two. So it's just a matter of whether somebody steps up into the right hole. Well, no matter what, the style points that Nebraska was looking for in this ball game are not going to be there. I mean, they, if they win the game, they're going to be undefeated, and that's fine. And I, and I, you know, they, they're not, they're not under, they're not beaten by anybody, and I think that's good. They deserve to be where they are. But what, what they were hoping for here today, I don't think they're coming out with. A variety of emotions reflected off those faces. There's this, the weakness in the schedule for Nebraska is at the top of it, the first two games. And there weren't that many teams in the Big 12 that uh, were capable of stepping up. Kansas State certainly won. Missouri certainly won. A&M, Oklahoma State. Much of the season. They didn't play AM. They'll play AM next week. Yep. Texas was a bit of a surprise this year. The wheels came off the wagon down there. Scott Frost is checking off. Fourth. And he's going to call a timeout. The crowd was roaring, and it's Scott Frost didn't ask for help from the referee, which he is entitled to. Well, I think he, he was trying to pull him off, Keith. I think he was. Trying to get him to jump offside. Now Tom's going to punt the football. He sends Cush in. He, he moved. He was just trying to help maybe pull him offside. 
Well, that was all choreographed ahead of time. Bush has had two punts blocked this year, if you're wondering about that. This would be his fifth punt. One minute to play. Wheeler is the deep man for the Buffaloes. Got to go after. Gets it out. Got to let it go, too. Boom. Oh, it's in the end zone. Close. <laughs> Woo, we've had a lot of close stuff here in the last five minutes. It'll come out to the 20. Well, they've got 52 seconds left. They're on the 20-yard line. They need to get to about the 35. Yeah, at least. Jason, like a 52 yard field goal. Well, Jason Lesson is the one with a bigger leg, right. and he has a long of 52. In fact, he produced the uh, three points in the Michigan game. They need about 45 yards to get in field goal range. They've got three wide outs. Passes away to the sideline. And out of bounds at the 36 yard line, Phil Savoy. John Hessler has never thrown the ball better than he has in the last two drives. 46 seconds. Savoy has been inconsistent most of the year and probably most of his career. But when they're needing, when they need it, the big play guys are coming through for the Colorado Buffaloes. You got Anderson, Toller, Savoy. Oh, little bit behind Savoy. He had it. It's not hard to throw that behind him because there's two receivers on that side, and you want to make sure that you don't get it picked off throwing it too far inside. You want to make sure the inside receiver clears. Play comes in. 43 seconds remaining. It was kind of quiet for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> uh -huh. Javon Green in there. Hessler's pass. That was intended for Green, and it was again behind him. But uh, Green had gone. Maybe he broke it off and went. Look, I don't know. Green but he was missed running himself Hessler's into coverage. Yep, he was. Hessler was throwing it where to where he was open, and Green was running into coverage. So he's throwing it to the outside, away from those white shirts, and Green, 19, was sliding inside. Green's a freshman. Third down and 10. 39 seconds. Boy, this and a couple be, of penalty flags. This may be offensive interference, Keith. Might be. Sweeney was there. Those two flags came real quick. Yeah, no question. This is offense. Look how offensive. Yep. Savoy, one-on-one -on, -one on Sweeney, the true freshman. There is no doubt or no question about that call, and it's a good call by the uh, the back judge on that side. We give these, we give, we criticize too many times the officials for not making a call properly. That was the correct call, and it's a and it's a killer because it's 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think that just released the balloon. Unless there's another miracle floating around. Stickers. Got a hand on it. But it 
it was batted away by Ralph Brown. The ball was in the air. It could go either way. The hearts of all of the Nebraska players had to be up near their throats, right in front of the bench. And it's a nice play by, uh, by Brown. So it is fourth down. 25. The two plays over on the near side where the wideouts ran into coverage and the ball was thrown behind them. Two big plays in this possession. This is the last chance for the Buffaloes. He's still alive. He's standing up on the mound and he is four and three yards short of the first down. As Sweeney wouldn't give it to him and finally fought him out of bounds with a little help from his big old friend Mike Rucker. And so that should do it for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Only 12 seconds remaining. And the Cornhuskers apparently are going to win this one 27 to 24. But we got a scare. Take that from the Buffalo and from John Hessler. Colorado has only beaten Nebraska four times in the last 31 years. And they've lost the last five straight. And it wasn't to be today. So, the Cornhuskers snap it, roll it, and the game is over. Your final score, Nebraska 27, Colorado 24. The meeting of the coaches and the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Scott Frost for Nebraska. He went over a thousand yards rushing and a thousand yards passing today. And John Hessler, what a day for him. 19 out of 36, what a half for him. 357 yards. He did have two interceptions for three touchdowns. Chevy donating $1,000 to each school. Now here is John Saunders.